Hello, hello, Calvary. Pastor Sean here. Do you know the power your words have? I'm constantly reminded of this power in my marriage, that things I say will have an effect on someone I love, whether I meant it one way or not. But not just that. According to the Bible, our words can either bless or curse just about everyone around us, but your words can also lead you into temptation and sin. So the real question is this, do you have control over your words? Do you find yourself constantly battling with the world around you, saying things you don't mean or hurting people you don't mean to hurt? Now, if you're persecuted for sharing the gospel of truth and love, that's one thing, but we can't use the gospel as an excuse to become angry and put people down around us. Psalm 39 recognizes the power of our words and what effect it has on those around us, and more importantly, ourselves. And in Psalm 39, we get to see a spiritual discipline in practice that some of us should practice more often than not, myself included. Check out what David says in Psalm 39. I said, I will guard my ways that I may not sin with my tongue. I'll guard my mouth with a muzzle so long as the wicked are in my presence. I was mute and silent. I held my peace to no avail and my distress grew worse. My heart became hot within me as I mused, the fire burned. Then I spoke with my tongue. O oh Lord, make me know my end, and what is the measure of my days? Let me know how fleeting I am. Behold, you have made my days few handbreadths, and my lifetime is nothing before you. Surely all mankind stands as a mere breath. Surely man goes about as a shadow. Surely for nothing they are in turmoil. Man heaps up wealth and does not know who will gather. And now, O oh Lord, for what do I wait? My hope is in you. Now, how about this? Has your mother ever told you if you have nothing nice to say, don't say anything at all? Or have you heard this proverb, Proverbs 17, 28? Even a fool, fool who keeps silent is considered wise. When he closes his lips, he is deemed intelligent. It's kind of like that. David is practicing fasting from his words because he recognizes his words have been causing him to sin. And in order to change that, he's using silence as a means to humble himself. Let me ask you, have you ever been around someone who just rubs you the wrong way? You ever try to be silent around a person like that? Maybe you can think about how upsetting that can be. That's where David finds himself. He says the turmoil within him grew worse. The more he thought about the things he could be saying to those people, the hotter and angrier he got. Oh, if only they knew the reckoning God has for them. If only they knew how terrible, inconsiderate, and rude they are. If only I could use my words to put that person in their place. Or if only I could teach that person a lesson, maybe they'd stop messing up their life so much. But David didn't blow up at the people who deserved his righteous anger. He didn't yell at them. He didn't call them names. He stuck to his silence. And instead, he confronted God. In so many words, when he could have asked God to rebuke the broken people around him, he instead asked God to rebuke him. He prayed for humility. David knew that the path he wanted to take and the words he wanted to say would lead him to sin. And I'm sure many of us find ourselves in a similar situation with our spouse, our coworkers, our children, random passerbyers, or even family members with opposite beliefs as us. We find ourselves on a path of destruction that, that's led by our words. And David is showing us a beautiful example to get off that path. When we go throughout our day, when we have an opportunity to speak, practice silence. Whatever that means for you, maybe it's literally not saying anything at all. Maybe it's not saying anything for a short time before responding. Maybe it's not speaking into something that's none of your business. Or maybe it's choosing not to give in to the bait when someone wants to argue with you or even make you angry. But regardless, practice silence because your words matter. And I'm not saying never speak in tough situations. What I am saying is take a minute and recognize the weight your words have on others and yourself. And start asking yourself if you want to waste your short time on earth arguing with people and allowing people to spin your emotions when instead we can be spending time talking to God, spending time asking God to give you humility. And when you finally open your mouth, if you open your mouth at all, have truth and love pour from it instead. 
I want to encourage you, Calvary, practice the spiritual discipline of being silent and asking for humility in hard situations, and you will be better off. Life on earth is so short. Don't be distracted by things that won't matter in our eternity. In fact, purposely practicing silence and asking for humility will lead you closer to Jesus and his character. I'm praying for you, Calvary. I love you guys a lot. I'll see you later.